today we are now going to talk about another topic we call as a hemoglobin urea hemoglobin urea meaning free hemoglobin present in urine now hemoglobin is normally present inside the rbc but when rbc is hemolyzed hemoglobin will appear in blood we call as a hemoglobinemia and that hemoglobin will be filtered at the glomerular level and it will appear in urine we call that as a hemoglobin urea so the etiology of hemoglobin urea will be because of hemolysis now this hemolysis we can divide into hereditary or acquired that is we call congenital or acquired in a congenital group because of enzyme defects or hemoglobinopathy in enzyme defect we have got g6pd deficiency or pkd and in hemoglobinopathy thalassemia group in a membrane abnormality like heredo hereditary spherocytosis ellipsocytosis so this will be included in a hereditary variety and we call those also as a intracorpuscular and in acquired variety we have got pnh or we call the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria or spur cell anemia and in extrinsic factor hypersclerism immune hemolysis traumatic or microangiopathic hemolysis or because of infection and toxins this group is also called extracorpuscular but paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is intracorpuscular abnormality while spur cell is a extracorpuscular abnormality it can be acute hemolysis or it can be a chronic hemolysis this is a classification in which gives you a separate group in a membrane defect spherocytosis ellipsocytosis enzyme defect g6pd deficiency or we call pkd pyruvate kinase deficiency in hemoglobin defects thalassemia or hemoglobinopathies like hemoglobin s or hemoglobin c in acquired group immune autoimmune which may be warm antibody or cold antibody or it can be allo allo immune variety like transfusion drug induced may be because of some of the drugs like quinine or methyl dopa and in a non immune variety it can be because of a march hemoglobin urea or prosthetic heart valve which is made up of metals so it is also called as mechanical it can be microangiopathic hemolytic anemia infection like malaria or clostridium belchai in case of extensive burns certain drugs and in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea it will be also seen in a case of hemolytic uremic syndrome thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura or dic when rbc is hemolyzed hemoglobin is separated out hemoglobin will be converted into methalbumin and hemoglobin will be filtered out at the level of glomerulus and it will appear in hemo urine we call as a hemoglobin urea and kidney will also produce hemosiderin pigments which will also appear in urine and so in urine you will detect hemoglobin plus sometime even hemosiderin now this particular rbc when it is destroyed this is called intravascular hemolysis and when rbc are destroyed in a ra system bilirubin is produced bilirubin is produced this bilirubin will be converted into a conjugated bilirubin which will appear in stool where it will be converted to stercobilinogen and stercobilinogen small quantity will be reabsorbed and that will appear in urine we call as a urobilinogen in a normal person urobilinogen is usually absent while in a case of a massive hemolysis stool will contain lot large quantity of stercobilinogen so from that a good quantity will be absorbed and you will have appearance of a urobilinogen in urine so in urine if you get hemoglobin urea hemosiderin urea and urobilinogen present it is in favor of a hemolytic anemia now you can have a abnormal color of urine which can mimic like hematuria that is because of presence of hemoglobin myoglobin or rbc 
and this three you will have to differentiate also from other condition which produces red color urine we have discussed in a previous lecture that is because of drugs and because of food materials and one of the common drugs we call as a phenophthalene rifampicin pyridium etc and in a food particularly beetroot this is the difference between intravascular hemolysis and extravascular hemolysis in a intravascular hemolysis there is a diff it is inside the vascular tree while extravascular it is in a reticuloendothelial system like spleen liver and bone marrow the etiology of intravascular hemolysis is very common is pnh like in case of a p falciparum we call it as a black water fever or because of mismatch blood transfusion while in case of an extravascular hemolysis it is very common in hemoglobinopathies hereditary hemolytic anemias autoimmune hemolytic anemias splenomegaly will be very common in extravascular hemolysis reticulocyte count will be elevated in both variety bilirubin will be increased in both variety indirect bilirubin will be increased plasma hemoglobin that is hemoglobinemia will be markedly increase in case of intravascular hemolysis more than extravascular hemolysis hemoglobin and hemosiderin will be present mainly in case of intravascular hemolysis and it will be absent in case of an extravascular hemolysis methalbumin will be positive in case of intravascular hemolysis it will be negative in extravascular heptoglobin will be decrease in both ldh will be increase in both and this is the main important difference that is hemoglobin and if hemosiderin is present in urine it is in favor of a intravascular hemolysis and if it is absent it is in favor of an extravascular hemolysis this is very very important and whenever you see a hemoglobin urea try to look at the peripheral smear because it gives a good idea these are the different shapes of rbc which can be detected in a peripheral smear and if you see those in a peripheral smear you can suspect some of the disorders and whenever you get a hemoglobin urea the treatment will be prevention of an aki because hemoglobin urea hemoglobin will block those micro blood vessels and will produce aki so for prevention of aki in presence of hemoglobin urea you must replace the volume and volume repletion is being done you make the urine alkaline by giving alkalizer and you can give mannitol or diuresis and if that is does not give a good results you can go for dialysis complication will depend upon the severity but hemoglobin urea can produce aki if there is a massive hemolysis it will produce anemia and depending upon the basic etiology you can have a complication here i end this lecture Okay, no.